um, we're hoping that he'll come out and apologize. Um, if I said something like that and it was taken out of context and I hurt other people, the first thing that I would do would be to clarify the meaning and apologize for hurting people. Even if it was my heartfelt belief, I would still say, I'm sorry for hurting you, tell me why it hurt you. Um, I'm hoping that he'll be man enough to do that. I'm fearful that he won't even show up, that he'll just send an intern out to talk to us. But we're hoping that he'll uh, have the courage to stand up for his views and either apologize or explain them to us face to face. Do you think that he will do that? I mean, do you, are you expecting? <laughs> I, I believe that people uh, uh, have the ability to redeem themselves. I, I, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be doing this work. Ten years ago, if we did this kind of rally, um, nobody would have shown up, uh, no, the media wouldn't have covered it, it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, but because people, I think, genuinely are good at heart, uh, when they're exposed to things, they want to do the right thing. And so I'm hoping that uh, Senator Eichelberger, as he's exposed to lesbian gay people and gets to know them more personally, that he'll uh, change his mind and realize that he's on the wrong side of history. Have you met with him in the past? I haven't. Okay. Has any, do you know if any um, gay rights advocates have met with him? And uh, we've been trying to uh, meet with him. I know that uh, some of the people who are here uh, have been making phone calls and have been trying to talk with him. Nobody has been able to get through to him. Okay. Mike, how do you think making such a statement like we're allowing them to exist can be construed in any other context. It can't be. <laughs> the, who allows somebody to exist? Now, he's, he's claiming now that he was only talking about couples, only talking about couples, but it's still questioning somebody's existence. S substitute the name lesbian and gay and put in any other ethnic group, any other minority. We're allowing black couples to exist. We're allowing Jewish couples to exist. Think about it in that context. That's the context that it's in. So whether he's questioning individuals' right to exist because they're lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or whether he's questioning the existence of couples to be able to be couples, that's what he's saying. Somebody, the Republican Party, he and his family, the state, somebody has the power over somebody's existence. And the only places that I can think of that really have the power over somebody's existence are Saudi Arabia, Iran, countries like that. They do have the power over your existence. And if you don't abide by what they believe is right, they terminate you. And do you think his, his bill uh, legalizing discrimination in the Pennsylvania Constitution could be a first step towards maybe his ultimate goal, not allowing people to exist? Uh, we'd have to ask him that. But what, what, what we're focusing on today is not the marriage bills. This, is the, this uh, news conference and what we're doing today is not about marriage. It's really about um, civil rights, civil liberties, and the right of people to exist. Um, we, even if you disagree, and we've had lots of people who, who've written to me and said, I don't think that lesbians and gays should be married. But what he said was outrageous. 